Hello everybody, my name is Kingsticks and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to play Nunu like a pro in just 16 minutes. The first thing I'm going to be showing you is how to clear the jungle effectively as Nunu. The best clear out for Nunu right now is to start with your bot lane. For your level order on Nunu, you're always going to want to start with your Q. At level 2, get your W and then at level 3, get your E, max Q first, W second and E last and of course, taking points in your ultimate whenever you can. Start up your W from your red buff camp and move right into your raptors. You'll do heaps of damage and be able to clear this camp really effectively since your snowball gets everything low and then your passive makes your auto attacks AOE. Make sure to queue the big one and you'll be good to go. After raptors, you're gonna wanna move on to your wolves. I like to start my snowball right as I get up to the turret. That way I can maneuver it more easily. The longer you have your snowball running, the faster it gets, making it more difficult to turn around these corners. This way I get to the wolf camp in a timely manner, and I do the maximum amount of damage with my snowball. As you can see, I'm taking the wolves very quickly and taking minimal damage. A quick pro tip on Nunu's W, the hitbox is very forgiving when moving around terrain. It acts as if the snowball is at its very smallest, when in fact it could be quite massive, making it very easy to navigate through turrets or around walls. Now, whenever you're approaching a large monster or champion, the whole snowball will count as a hitbox so it's a little bit harder to weave in then but don't worry because your snowball when it hits has a massive hitbox and will usually knock up everything around that target. After wolf camp you're going to want to move on to your blue buff and then your gromp. At that point you can move on to the scuttle crab. You can do this on any side with the new jungle changes from patch 9.9 .9 with the later scuttle spawn. You want to do 5 out of your 6 jungle camps and then the scuttle crabs will be spawning in at that moment. That way you don't have to wait for them. This is going to lead to a lot of later ganks around the 3 minute 30 second mark. Once the scuttle crab does spawn in try to knock it up with your W and smite it in midair and then consume it. Remember the skull crab does take a lot of additional damage whenever you do have it CC'd. After you take the skull crab if you feel comfortable you can invade the enemy if you think you can win the 1v1. If not set up a gank with your snowball behind the enemy laner. In this case I probably would have gotten the kill but Anivia barely finishes him off. I stay to help shove in the wave that way we can crash our minions and Yasuo will miss out on a lot of gold and experience. At this point my best play is to move towards the next scuttle crab. And since I'm pretty sure Amumu started bot lane based off of how late his bot laners got to lane and since most junglers do start with their bot lane especially after these scuttle changes I'm pretty sure he won't show up for this. And even if he did show up, I could easily 1v1 him. There's very few tanks that can 1v1 Nunu due to his massive healing on his Q. Before we proceed, let's take a look at the best runes to take on Nunu. Alright guys, now I'm going to be showing you the very best page for Nunu Jungle. You're going to want to take Aftershock and Fawn of Life. Demolish is also a good choice, especially if you plan on camping a specific lane to get first turn, but in general, Fawn of Life is better for what we're trying to do. The next rune is very situational. If you're playing against something that's going to cheese you early game, like a Zin Zhao or Lee Sin, Bone Plating is a great choice. If you're playing against another tank jungler like a Mu or Sejuani, you can easily get away with going conditioning, which is going to help out your scaling a lot. For your next rune, you pretty much always want to go revitalize. It's really nice to have on Nunu since your Q is just such a massive hill. You can also get away with going overgrowth, but I personally really like revitalize. For your secondary tree, you have two options. You can go for inspiration or for precision. I have better luck with precision going for the alacrity. It's really nice. It synergizes with your passive since your passive gives you temporary AOE on your auto attacks. And then I like to go for triumph. It helps to keep you alive in team fights on kills and assists. You get a massive bonus of HP, which also revitalize works with. Next up, you're going to want to take attack speed, armor, and health. I've had the most success with this new rune page and I highly recommend it whether you're an iron or in challenger. After returning to base, I'm going to work my way down to the start of my clear towards my golem since my raptors just spawned in I can set up a full clear path. This is also a great position to be in, not only because I'm at the start of my clear path, but I am also near the enemy bot laners who happen to be shoving in. Unfortunately, my bot laners just died, so it puts me in a weird spot where I'm just coming down to get this minion experience so I can hit level 6 faster. Another reason why it's a great place to be is because at the 5 minute mark, dragon spawns in, so by being here, I was taking out 3 birds with 1 stone. The enemies are full HP and pushing up, I lay a pink ward in this bush just to make sure they don't know I'm here, and sure enough, they're greedy, full HP, and looking for some more kills. 
Thresh gets off a great lantern, but I'm on my way to cut them off. Even though all my spells are down, I'm still incredibly tanky and have my Q, which has a solid amount of damage. Try to give away the kills to your AD carry or other carry champions on your team if you can. If you do get the kill on Nunu, it's not the end of the world, but it's much better if your carry gets it. When moving on to your next gank, feel free to use your snowball at a fairly long distance away to maximize the amount of speed, damage, and CC you'll have on your upcoming gank. In this case, Yasuo ends up walking towards me because he probably thought I was on dragon. He ends up juking out my snowball, putting himself in a bad spot, so he ends up having to flash out. All in all, it was a successful gank. Next time I go to gank him, he won't have flash, and it will also make it hard for him to finish a kill on Anivia. If you find an opportunity to do a sneaky dragon because your laners are pushing up, or if all the enemies are in base, the best way to do it is by using the blast cone. If the enemies have taken the scuttle crab, or if they have a ward in the river, it can't see all the way into the dragon pit, so they won't be able to see you, or the dragon and you can just sneak away and solo it. You might need to go into the practice tool to get a hang of your snowball, but once you do have the hang of it, you can start it from all the way back in the raptor bush and make it all the way to wolf camp, having maximum damage, speed, and CC to help you take the wolf camp even faster. One of the best parts about Nunu as a tank jungler is he can counter jungle super effectively. He has massive single target clear and secure ability with his massive Q smite combo. In this case, I see a Mumu's bot lane and I was already on this side of the map. There's no way I could get to bot lane fast enough. So I made a reasonable trade of my bot lane for these camps since I couldn't get there anyways after red buff, toss a snowball into raptor camp, clear it pretty damn fast and give myself a solid gold and XP advantage over the Amumu rather than recalling and getting absolutely nothing. I saw a Nivea rotated bot and Yasuo followed her. So I go ahead and go mid and clear the wave as fast as possible. If you're ever in a situation where you have to clear something quickly, it's okay to use your ult on Nunu. That way you can get that extra pressure. It's on a relatively low cooldown and it's not super high impact in a team fight, so it's really not the end of the world. For most champions, chasing Nunu is impossible. Just hold on to your E, walk the other direction, and blast them. The slow is insane, and the slow is insane with solid range, absolutely relentless. Here I make it easy getaway and I don't even have boots. I don't have the most ganks in the world in this game since my bot lane has been hardcore inting. So what you need to do on Nunu unless the enemy just doesn't allow you is try to show up to every dragon spawn especially after the first one and just take it. Even if your teammates don't come you can take it fairly quickly but make sure you ping it because if your teammates do help you you guys can usually take it fast before the enemies will even respawn especially in mid and low elo. This is a pivotal team fight so I'm going to go ahead and slow it down. Anivia has a decent pick on the Yasuo but the enemy bot lane is rotating quick so I pop the plant, immediately activate my W to push Yasuo away and to also give some really good pressure for Anivia inside of her circle. I'm going to go ahead and chase Yasuo down because my massive snowball hitbox plus Anivia has herself guarded with her ultimate. At this point, I'm going to finish off Yasuo with my E and then walk backwards into the fight starting my ultimate. Amumu has already wasted all of his CC, so just by me holding on to this ultimate, even if they flash out, I'll have a solid slow on them and it sets up an amazing quadra for my team. Bear in mind, at this point, we were down 5 kills to 10 and things weren't looking so good for us. After your first blue buff, especially if your mid laner is doing good and is a mana hungry mid laner like Anivia, try to give her as many blues as possible. So the enemy blue buff, your second blue buff, give it to her and support for your team. Like you saw in that team fight on Nunu, using your ultimate first isn't typically best. You usually want to hang on to it until after the enemy team blows all of their stuns. You can use it early if you're having a hardcore pill for your AD carry because they get jumped, but typically, like we discussed, it's best to hold on to it until you can make the most value out of it because it really does a lot of damage and is an insane slow. If you're wondering why I'm over here since we just won that team fight, the enemies are spawning in so it was safe for me to use my snowball through the wolf camp to raptors, taking raptors quickly, red, and now I can move on to herald. I am going to try to pull it away from the wall though since Amumu's most likely going to come to his red buff, realize it's not there and he might ward over the wall thinking I'm doing this or just throw out a random Q. So since I pulled this away from the wall a bit, I probably could have pulled it away a little bit farther. I can do this slightly more safely. All right, let's look at another team fight. Bear in mind the enemy team is still far ahead of us, especially the Sivir. In this fight, 
I'm going to be going in every time my Q is up, especially if I'm high on HP. So here I'm full on HP. So I went in with my W to CC. Now I'm just going in every single time my Q is up or my E is up. My E is mainly for the pill and my Q so I can keep tanking. I step up, get off a semi-decent ulti, trying to do my best to pill for the Jinx. I'm going to turn around, get the Yasuo and Garen off of her. And I'm going to have to flash out past the Anivia. I can't go in yet. I'm low on health, so I can't get close enough to Q. So I'm going to have to wait for my E to come up. Right now, this is a two for two. Janna just went down, making it a two for three. Not so good for us. Luckily for us, this Thresh is hella greedy and Garen is behind. Garen goes in, I pull for the Jinx with my E, and it is an easy fight. That is how you have to play team fights if your team is not ahead on Nunu. You have to go in and play around your abilities, kiting for your carries. Here, I'm going to show you a really common mistake tank players and Nunu players make. Even though you have a lot of healing on Nunu, if you do not have your AD carry with you, and this game is our main source of damage, you cannot go in and tank like a madman. I got myself Permacy Seed and got myself killed pretty much instantly dealing with the aftermath i w from base and i'm trying to defend this turret i'm pretty damn tanky and i have my thorn mail finished so i'm putting out some cc i snare the sivir and i want to try to keep the enemies here for as long as possible so my team can catch up bear in mind i've gotten us all the dragons and i know we have at least one windrick so we're pretty damn fast thresh just blew his boots mobility so i figured i could chase him down with my e but he barely gets out of my reach and gets his boots of mobility again now that my Jan is done, I have to pill for my Jinx. Unfortunately, she does go down, but I am going to pick up the Thresh. Sivir is just so far ahead. Luckily, she is out of mana. My Q is up. Going to get off a Q on the Yasuo and simply walk away by slowing him and moving in the opposite direction. I'm going to try to heal off the Dragon at this point. Sivir and Yasuo are both very low on health, so I figure they'll back and I can sneak this Dragon since I still have a Pink Horde on it. On Nunu, just because you start up your W doesn't mean you can't cancel it. In this case, Thresh comes up behind me, I stop it to dodge his CC and put him in a really bad spot. I hit him with all my E, snare him, and it allows my team time to catch up. You can catch a lot of opponents off guard by this since most Nunus either don't know they can cancel their W or they just forget to. If you're in a situation where you have multiple teammates and it's this late in the game, don't forget you're hella tanky especially with your Q. My team didn't trust me. I get the massive shield for my ultimate and we finish the Garen. Your ultimate gives you such a big shield and it lasts for several seconds to where you can tank several turret shots just off your ult shield alone. A lot of players in mid elo and even sometimes low high elo will feel cocky just because they have a turret but once again you're Nunu. I walk up E and I tap my snowball to knock him up instantly. It is a short knock up and stun but most of the time that's really all you need especially if you're canceling their dash or CC by using it. For your items on Nunu always start with Hunter's Talisman then get refillable potion and warding totem on your first back. You're gonna want to try to get your skirmisher saber and Bambi cinder. After you have those get boots of speed and also on your first back always try to get an oracle lens that way you can set up some really nice ganks and not waste too much time your essential items only really consist of the cinder hulk and tier 2 boots it can either be tabbies or merc treads just depending on the situation if the team is mostly ad with auto attacks go tabbies otherwise if they're ap with a bunch of cc go for merc treads Nunu has a lot of situational slash optional items. The best ones are Spirit Vistage if the enemy team is AP. Another great one is Thornmel if the enemy team has two or more AD characters. Really good against auto attack based AD carries, especially with the recent Thornmel slash Bramble vest buffs. And then Deadman's is another one of my favorites along with adaptive helm the rest of these are a lot more situational with these four i tend to build pretty much all the time and then these are just when the situation calls for it another item that is really situational that i didn't put on here would be locket and then a knight's vow if you do have a hyper carry ad carry that you believe in these can be some good third and fourth items i typically don't build them however since i'm just better at peeling regardless and i find building these items takes away a lot from my tankiness you can get off some really nice engages once it's the 20 minute mark and later just home guard from base with your w on and you'll be going fast af just check out the sheer speed of this catch garen off guard and also save my 80 carry and support slow him down snare him and at this point we have to defend our turret since anivia got herself caught out all I have to do is peel for the Jinx 
and not get myself completely sucked into their ranks. I'm dodging their CC, wasting their time, and allowing my Jinx to get off some insane auto attacks while I plow down amazing slows with my E. Staying on top of my Jinx still since they have the numbers advantage, letting her get off massive hits from the back line. This is exactly what you need to do on Nunu. I flash out to stay alive. I'm gonna go ahead and W back in because I have War Mox healing me. Moving on to another team fight. I'm gonna hold on to my ultimate until they blow all their CC. Sure enough, they waste everything on me while our AD carry sits comfortably in the back line. Once they waste everything, I start up a full ultimate get a kill and I'm gonna proceed to pill and not go in too deep. If I go in too deep, I'll just die. So I'm trying to keep myself relatively close to my carries. I do end up dying, but we wrap up the game with an easy win due to my strong tanking and Jinx strong scaling. And that is gonna wrap up this pro Nunu guide. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to join our icon channel and our quarterback club. You can even use them both at the same time to earn some awesome rewards. Don't forget to smash that like button, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.